industrial sectors exploded under the creature's foot. Energy plants cracked with electrical power. The few aircraft that were on the air pounded the creature with every gun and missile they had, forced to circle around the creature as it continued its march, unabated. Each and every Mandari felt their hearts fill with dread at the sight of the creature, an unstoppable force heading directly to the nation's largest hydroelectric power plant. A marvel of engineering, a work of art that took 12 generations to complete, it generated enough hydraulic energy to sustain the entire host nation, and more, with water reserves to sustain them for years of drought, and the creature was headed straight to it. It drank all the water in minutes. The creature left the reservoir dry, poisoned by its acidic saliva, and left a pile of rubble in its wake. The host nation, a local power, now was completely ruined. Over 27% of the city was destroyed, 50% was damaged beyond safe use, and 72% was contaminated by the creature's parasites and bodily fluids. That thing was not a creature, it was an Armageddon made manifest. The aftermath of the creature's rampage traveled far. Stock markets plummeted, fear provoking the bankruptcy of millions of enterprises overnight. The national economies of hundreds of thousands of nations plummeted, international trade halted completely, riots spread across the world. Famous scientists tried to explain what was simply impossible. Demagogues and usurpers tried to explain in a complicated web of lies and diversions why this was all the work of some long persecuted class of people in their nations or their political rivals. Several cult members committed ritualistic suicides, with some going as far as committing terrorism in their vow to end their own lives. Religions of all sorts tried to come up with an explanation. In truth, every single Mandari was being plagued by the fear of the unexplainable, fear of the unknown. It triggered something. A thing buried beneath 140 million years of evolution. A primitive response that managed to keep them as the dominant life force of this planet for so long. They banded together, putting their collective effort in something greater than themselves. It was a small coalition of neighboring nations at first, but in time, it grew into an alliance of over two dozen nations. The Event Response Initiative, ERI. Its task was simple, to understand and to eliminate the threat of the unknown creature. It possessed at its disposal, over 370 square kilometers of land, 170 billion Mandari to protect, and the armies of 30 nations to command. All in a vow to end the threat of this most hated enemy. Its official name would be given by the hand of its victims, Massive Ambulant Nemesis, or MAN. It was bureaucratic, clinical, and clearly hostile. While the most deranged Mandari, that called the thing holy, would baptize it by another name, Hyuma. The creature was put into surveillance, scouting blimps and high-altitude flights, keeping the creature under constant watch. Not that it was hard not to notice the moving mountain across the plain fields. It followed the small canals dug into the endless plantation fields, drinking every drop of water in its path, causing untold destruction across the land. Using the intelligence gathered, it was made clear that the creature was searching for a large body of water. The creature was fast, outpacing even the fastest jet crafts the ERI possessed. It could cross an entire nation in good minutes. There were three major bodies of water that the creature could reach, that were all artificial in nature. The Abartes Reservoir, a dam that powered over 700 million houses. Grantanapo's Water Treatment Plant, the vital infrastructure that supplied water for hundreds of millions. And the High Dam of Brukili, whose power was considered vital to the continuous operation of the industrial complexes that surrounded it. The command chambers of the ERI were in constant turmoil. Secretaries received representatives of different nations. The tides of unity being tested in the very first crises that abated the alliance. He needed time. 
the representatives pressured the Secretary General for an answer. Many wanted to order to attack. A stroke of brilliance or an insight that could save them all from the nightmare. It was moving. The alarm sounded in ERI's headquarters, man was moving, and it was going fast. Man was going to the general direction of all three vital infrastructures. The Secretary General told the Abardi's representative to order a general evacuation of the area. The stunned representative couldn't comply. The massive hydroelectric dam maintained a delicate balance of water flow that allowed the grid to function normally. The moment the dam overproduced beyond the demand, it would damage the electrical grid of millions. Arguments were exchanged, voices were raised, the stakes of three nations at hand. All ignored the attempt of report. The news had already leaked. The population evacuated themselves, panicking their way out of the general area, as soon as they could. The officers and soldiers tried to keep the order, but they were also overwhelmed by the wave of fear, as everyone tried to fend for themselves. The local government tried to take action, organizing the chaos that ensued. Barricades were set, trying to control the flow of the Mandari, that flooded the streets. Order was in sight, the ERI personnel coordinated a response in the best way they had. A Mandari gave a glance towards the horizon, beyond the city, far into the horizon, it saw the man coming. Complete pandemonium erupted. The mass of living Mandari overwhelmed every post and guard they found. Militias opened fire on fleeing civilians, in an attempt to find their own way across the multitude of people. Kin was trampled to death by the mass of desperate Mandari. Even their army broke under the sight of such a creature, with armor columns simply driving into the panicking civilians. Soldiers gunned down the masses to not be swallowed by the storm of chaos, in a scene that repeated a thousand times, across every one of the three nations. The alarms died out. Reports came. Man had stopped. Standing menacingly, two minutes from the mass of fearful Mandari. It extended an appendage between its legs. Something fell from it, rain. It was raining. While millions upon millions of Mandari clogged the streets, those who couldn't get to a building in time, found themselves drowning into the droplets of water, before they got drained by the sewage system of the cities. The water treatment plant was flooded with people, damaging the controls of the water gates. The lack of control flooded the pipes of the water pipework with chemicals, with such levels, that made it poisonous. Rupili's automatic systems of sewage kicked in, it opened floodgates to redirect the water into the emergency canals, the same that hundreds of thousands were using to escape. Abardi's power plants would enter in overproduction, the electrical turbines frying most of the electrical grid. It was linked with the immense power plant. Electrical fires erupted across the local area, killing those that tried to flee from the rain. While the pandemonium waged, the man simply stood there, watching itself in the water of the rain. Author's name and the link to original text is in the description. Consider tapping the thumbs up and pressing the subscribe button if you want to listen to the subsequent parts of this story.